Dear students and viewers, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our online class. I am Murshid Imam, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Government Shahid, Sohrawardi College, Dhaka. Today I am here for the students of Honors Third Year, Department of English. My dear students, hope you are fine. But sorry to say, I have arranged two Zoom classes for you, but your attendance was very, very poor. Okay? And now, as per your recommendation, I have come here once again with my recorded class. And uh, you know, we have completed the topic Preface to the Legal Ballads by William Wordsworth. And after completing the topic, I have arranged uh, two Zoom classes for you. And in my first Zoom class, I uh, have mentioned some important questions from the topic uh, uh, Preface to the Legal Ballads by William Wordsworth. And in my second class, I discussed uh, the, the poem, uh, The Scholar Gypsy by Matthew Arnold. Uh, as most of the students uh, have missed the class, I am uh, repeating the uh, class for you. In my first Zoom class, uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, that is, uh, I gave you some important questions or mentioned some important questions from the topic previous to the legal ballads. I am repeating the questions uh, for you. My dear students, write down please. Uh, write down please. Uh, that is, uh, first question. The uh, preface to the legal ballads is an epoch making document discuss. Okay. Or uh, the same, uh, the question may be, uh, repeated in this way that is discuss the importance of the preface uh, to the legal ballads as a pitch of literary criticism okay the answer will be the same then go to next question what are the main themes of the preface to the lyrical ballads then go to the next question please what is words 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 conceptions of poetry as revealed in his preface to the lyrical ballads then go to next question please consider the preface in the light of the statement that it is the manifesto of english romantic movement okay or discuss the uh, uh, preface as the manifesto of english romantic movement okay then uh, go to the next question please assess the validity of wordsworth's theory of poetic diction and also examine coleridge's criticism of it okay or uh, that is evaluate Wordsworth's view on the language of poetry. Then go to next question please. Discuss Wordsworth's conceptions of the poet, his qualifications and function. Okay. Then uh, next question please. Evaluate Wordsworth's statement that a poet is a man speaking to men. A poet is a man speaking to men. My dear students, uh, then go to next question, please. And that is, uh, critically examine Wordsworth's theory that poetry takes its origin in emotion recollected in tranquility. Critically examine Wordsworth's theory that poetry takes its origin in emotion recollected in tranquility. Okay, uh, so that's all about the questions uh, from the topic preface to the lyrical ballads by. Uh, William Wordsworth. My dear students, now uh, uh, in my uh, second Zoom class, uh, I uh, uh, we have read that is the poem, the scholar Gypsy. Okay, the uh, we have discussed the theme of the poem, the scholar Gypsy. What kind of writing is it? Okay, we have discussed it, and I am repeating the uh, uh, topic once again for you. That is, you know, the scholar Gypsy. The poem is uh, written by whom, my dear students? You, yeah, I know you know it. That is Matthew Arnold. Matthew Arnold wrote the poem, The Scholar Gypsy. Then, what kind of writing is it, my dear students? Yes, you know that is the Scholar Gypsy is a pastoral elegy. Okay, a pastoral elegy. And uh, you know what is an elegy? Yes, an elegy is a uh, poem where the poet moons for the death of. Uh, the of, it, of an individual that is uh, for some uh, near and um, for his near and dear ones okay uh, but here uh, you will see that the scholar gypsy is an elegy but here the poet moans for 
uh, what my distance not for the death of an individual okay uh, here uh, we'll see that uh, in the scholar gypsy the poet that is matthew arnold laments the death of an age okay of religious faith of the treasured values of life okay uh, he looks at the past in nostalgic haze. Okay, we we'll see it. And um, what is a pastoral? Yes, my dear students, you know, a, a pastoral is a poem dealing with life of the shepherds, their joys and sorrows, their simple life and love in the heart of nature. Okay, and uh, my dear students, uh, you know. Uh, in uh, we also discussed that is uh, nature is pastoral. Uh, uh, poetry is, is idealized okay nature in pastoral poetry is idealized and serves as a background of the human drama and you uh, you see that the scholarship is not a carbon copy of the traditional pastoral poems okay my dear students here arnold has no doubt a pastoral setting but it is related to urbanized oxford and his con and her country side where one does not expect an idyllic atmosphere arnold has therefore hardly any scope to invest uh, nature with the light that never was on sea or land the poet has of course introduced a shepherd in the poem okay a shepherd in the poem whom he dismisses as, at the earliest opportunity but he himself is not a shepherd he is only a person in quest of the scholar gypsy and hence our uh, uh, conclusion is that in point of structure the scholar gypsy is a pastoral poem but the spirit breathed into it is typically Victorian, the spirit of unrest. Okay, now my, my students, uh, uh, here we will see that the shepherd who is in the uh, who is the poet's companion in his quest for the scholar gypsy is a real shepherd. Okay, uh, he is not an allegorical figure representing as a learned friend of the poet. Uh, and no readers uh, uh, will ever mistake the semi-urban civilized life of Oxford as rustic life. Arnold has no occasion to idealize the setting of his poem. They are scenes all seen by him. The charm of the scenery of Oxford is so exquisite, exquisite that it needs no idealization. The poet has not used the convention of pastoral poetry, which would have made it rather artificial it deals on the other hand with scenes of nature as known as seen by an educated english man okay my dear students and uh, you know we have uh, read that is uh, the first para or that is the um, first 10 lines about uh, okay the first para of the poem the scholar gypsy we have read in our uh, second zoom class okay my dear students and uh, uh, Please get ready with your textbook, please, my dear students. And uh, uh, here uh, we also mentioned that the poem, the scholar gypsy, first appeared in a volume entitled Poems in 1853. It contained a few poems included in the two earlier volumes. And uh, Arnold's original idea was to entitle the poem the first mesmer um, the first mesmerist okay he read glanville's vanity of dogmatizing in 1845 and since then had been seriously thinking of writing a poem on the scholar gypsy the materials of which were drawn on glanville okay the scholar gypsy is certainly the most memorable poem of arnold you know and uh, my dear students so uh, you see um, the theme of the poem uh, was influenced by where, whom my dear students glanville's vanity of dogmatizing okay okay joseph glanville's vanity of uh, uh, dogmatizing okay and uh, here you see that is uh, joseph glanville a moralist uh, and uh, he was he did, did not seek to inculcate uh, the, a moral in his uh, story okay he simply wanted to illustrate concentration of will power which is known as he notism or mesmerism okay and uh, my dear students uh, you know that is arnold uh, is a uh, uh, one of the representative poets of victorian uh, age and here you will see that arnold is weary of the uh, materialism and skepticism of the victorian age okay his reflections center around a character known as the scholar gypsy and he has drawn all the relevant materials on 
Joseph Glanville's I mentioned earlier that is book uh, uh, Joseph Glanville's uh, book entitled The Vanity of Dogmatizing and Glanville who was a strong moralist of the 17th century a moralist himself uh, that is uh, Arnold felt irresistibly drawn to the story of the scholar Gypsy and made a severe criticism of the Victorian life in a sense the scholar Gypsy became Arnold's objective correlative Arnold attributed to the scholar uh, uh, his personal feelings since he was a classical poet and therefore sought to avoid writing about himself okay now uh, my dear students uh, 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 I have also uh, uh, discussed the life and works of Matthew Arnold uh, and uh, my dear students I uh, um, uh, know uh, uh, that uh, you have learned about the life and works of Matthew Arnold uh, in my uh, class and uh, my dear students in my classroom I discussed uh, the, the poem that is uh, we have read the poem Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold and I also discussed life and works of Matthew Arnold uh, and in my second Zoom class I also focused on it uh, but uh, my dear students uh, uh, I hope you will uh, read uh, about the life and works of Matthew Arnold okay and uh, at home okay and uh, you may take help from uh, your friends okay who have uh, done the class the, the, that is the zoom class uh, the my uh, with me uh, those who are present uh, in our second zoom class and uh, you can uh, take help from those friends okay my dear students and I am uh, going to the a text okay get ready with your textbook please that is uh, we will read the first para of the poem the scholar gypsy by matthew arnold okay then my dear students uh, read the first para of the poem please the scholar gypsy that is go for they call you shepherd from the hill go shepherd and untie the wattled coats no longer live thy wistful flock unfed, nor let thy howling fellows rack their throats, nor the copped harvest shoot another head. But when the fields are still, and the third men and dogs all gone to rest, and only the white sheep are sometimes seen, Cross and recross the strips of moon blanched green. Come, shepherd, and again begin the quest. Okay, my dear students, uh, uh, the first para that is the, uh, the first ten lines of the poem that is the first stanza. Okay, the first stanza, uh, and now I will focus on the theme of the first stanza that is here. Uh, the poet asks the shepherd to look after his bleating sheep okay, and let them loose from their folds so that they may feed on grass in the fields. Okay, my dear students, I am repeating the line uh, for you. That is the poet. Here yeah, the poet asks a shepherd to look after his bleating sheep and let them loose from their folds so that they may feed on grass in the fields. And uh, what are the worst dogs doing, my dear students? Yes, the worst dogs are impatiently barking. It is only after the performance of his daily duties that he should come to the poet in the evening. The fields there will be calm and quiet. Tired farmers and their dogs have gone home to have their well earned rest. Some stray sheep are nibbling grass, which looks dark in moonlight. It is then that the poet and his companion, the shepherd, engaged throughout the day, will be in quest of the scholar gypsy. So, you see a very nice pastoral setting, my dear students. And here uh, Arnold writes a pastoral elegy against a pastoral setting. But he does not represent himself as a shepherd, uh, as I mentioned earlier. This, some critics have identified the companion of the poet as Arnold's friend Arthur Huffclough, okay, who is represented as a shepherd. In thesis, uh, and uh, he and Arnold were engaged in the same pursuit, okay. The another poem when we read the poem, 
uh, we'll see it so uh, that's the uh, uh, theme that is uh, of the first stanza okay uh, now go to second stanza please go to the second stanza of the poem that is here where the reaper was at work of late in this high field's dark corner where he lives his coat his basket and his earthen cruise and in the sun all morning binds the ships then here at noon comes back his stores to use here will i sit and wait while to my ear from uplands far away the bleating of the folded flocks in born is born okay with distant cries of reapers in the corn all the live murmur of a summer's day okay my dear students uh, if i want to analyze the second stanza of the poem that is here the poet uh, who is not a shepherd uh, that is waits for his companion in a shady corner of a field he watches with interest a reaper who has left there his jacket his basket of food and an earthen drinking vessel he is uh, presumably engaged in reaping the crops okay he is presumably uh, engaged in reaping the crops he binds the sheaves of corn when the sun is shining in the morning he comes back at noon to eat and drink what he has brought with him it is where the poet will sit and listen to the bleating of the flocks of sheep in their folds the voices of the reapers will also be heard in different parts of the fields the poet will also be delighted to hear the sweet musical sounds of the spring okay and uh, my dear students here you see uh, uh, the second uh, stanza the explanation of the second stanza of the poem uh, the scholar gypsy and uh, my dear students uh, in uh, the third stanza go to the third stanza of the poem that is uh, screen uh, is this uh, nook over the high half tipped field and here till sundown shepherd will i be through the thick corn the scarlet poppies peep and round green roots and yellowing stalks i see pale pink con uh, convol convolvulus in tendrils creep okay pale pink convolvulus in tendrils creep and air swept lindens yield their scent and rustle down their perfumed showers of bloom on the bent grass where i am laid and power me from the august sun with shade and the eye travels down to oxford towers so it's the third stanza of the poem and if i want to analyze the third stanza of the poem that is uh, it will be like that that is as arranged uh, arnold's companion the shepherd comes at sunset the poet reclines on the soft grass under the shady trees which protects him from glaring rays of the sun he listens to the bleatings of the sheep and the cries of the reapers he feasts his eyes on the beauty of the poppies blooming in the corn field he is delighted to inhale the perfume of the lime trees which are shaken by the wind he is seated in the high field's dark corner and looks wishfully at the towers of oxford okay uh, so my dear students uh, that's all today and in our next class we will read uh, or we will start from the fourth stanza of the poem the scholar gypsy and after completing the poem my dear students okay uh, after uh, completing the uh, poem i will give you some important questions from matthew arnold that is from the scholar gypsy and particularly from the scholar gypsy and i will also that is um, uh, i will also mention uh, that is uh, my dear students uh, here uh, i will also give you some short questions from uh, the scholar gypsy and also 
I will discuss some brief questions from uh, Matthew Arnold, okay, after completing the poem. And hope uh, all of you will read the poem uh, uh, at first at home, okay, by yourself, okay, read the poem yourself, okay, at home. And uh, no more today, my dear students, uh, in our previous, uh, sorry, in our next class, we will start from stanza 4 of the poem, the scholar gypsy and we will discuss elaborately uh, uh, on the topic the scholar gypsy okay my dear students no more today see you again in our next class till then goodbye allah hafiz